Capricorn, hello. Welcome to your January 2021 Oracle and Tarot reading. My name is Tessa and this is Tessa's Tarot. Before I get started, I just need to let you guys know that these readings are going to be for your ascendant sign, okay? Um, so if you have been watching my channel for as long as it's been going, um, I am switching things up a little bit since I am going to start incorporating astrology and planetary transits into my readings. Um, I absolutely believe that it gives a lot more of an in-depth and clear representation of what's going on right now. Um, so if you are a Capricorn sun or moon, this reading might not resonate for you. Um, I would definitely watch your ascendant, okay? So if you're a Capricorn ascendant, awesome, stick around. Um, but if you have a different ascendant sign, check that one out because I am following the ascendant natal chart um, and it's going to be according to the zodiac signs that are associated with those specific houses starting with your ascendant sign. So whatever your ascendant is, uh, that's the zodiac sign that was rising um, on the eastern horizon uh, when you were born, the minute that you were born, and then it goes in order around the wheel. So if your first house, if you're a Capricorn ascendant, your first house will be Capricorn, your second house will be Aquarius, so forth and so forth, okay? So the way that I'm going to do this um, oracle and tarot reading is, I'm first I'm going to just kind of give you a broad, like an overview, a list of the different transits that are taking place for January 2021, starting with the current transit. So uh, beginning with what we have have going on right now in our solar system and then what's to come in January just to kind of give you an idea of what um, part uh, what house and what part of your life these transits are taking place and then that's when we're gonna really kind of narrow it down and dive into Oracle and tarot to see like to really see what part of your life what house is being affected uh, more like mostly now, with the bigger energies that are taking place, the bigger energies taking place is going to be the Capricorn energies, um, because we have the Sun in Capricorn, uh, we have Mercury coming into Capricorn, um, you know, we're entering Capricorn season, so there's there's going to be a lot of that energy taking place. So the house that is going to be kind of the bigger energies is going to be placed um of course, in your first house, because you're a Capricorn rising. Uh, so it's going to be affecting your, you know, yourself, your ego, your expression, you know, you have your birthday. Uh, well, if you also have your son in Capricorn, you have your birthday, okay? But, um, but your, you know, your outward expression, your outward expression, this is your first house. Um, and then another of the bigger energies that are taking place is the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius, which is transiting your second house of, possess excuse me, of possessions, values, and financial security and stability. So those are some of the bigger energies happening. But the tarot and oracle is going to bring out some, maybe some other areas of your life. Uh, so that's why I like to get into that. It just kind of narrows down the information, okay? Okay, so we're going to start with what we have going on right now at this point in time. We're still in 2020. At least I'm filming this video in 2020. You might be watching this video next week, and that's totally fine. Um, so we have the sun in Capricorn in your first house. We have the moon. So currently we have a full moon in Cancer, um, and that's transiting your seventh house of relationships, partnerships, and, um, you know, a sense of uh, a harmony and balance um, with uh, the relationships that you have around you. So there could definitely be some uh, light and bright energy kind of shining in that department. Mercury is currently in Capricorn in your first house. Venus is in Sagittarius in your 12th house of spirituality, um, creativity, and um, like isolation. Mars, uh, so that definitely re a more reflective attitude when it comes to your love life. Um, Mars is in Aries in your fourth house of home, family, and roots. Jupiter and Saturn conjunct Aquarius in your second house. Uranus is um, retrograde in Taurus in your fifth house of children, creativity, and um, oh my god, I always draw like a blank for this one. I don't know why. Oh, and romance. I'm sorry. So it changes there. Um, Neptune is in Pi. It's in Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces in your third house of 
siblings, friendship, um, and short distance travel, communication as well. Um, Pluto is in Capricorn in your first house of self. And then, um, so this is what's going on right now. So you're, um, so moving along into January, we have planets moving into other zodiac signs. So Mars is going to enter Taurus on January 6th, and that is in your fifth house of creativity, children, and romance. Um, so perhaps like a sense of needing to take action. In this department, there could be like an impulsive need to kind of take action in this department. Um, on January 8th, we have Mercury entering Aquarius in your second house of finances and possessions and values. Uh, some communication could be coming to the forefront in this regard, especially if you have like roommates and you're living with other people. Um, also January 8th, Venus is entering Capricorn in your first house. So a sense of like needing to reevaluate maybe your love life or things that you have kind of going on there. January 13th, there's going to be a new moon in Capricorn in your first house. So there could, you know, new ideas might start coming to the forefront. Um, and really what it is you want to do, you know, really about setting your intentions for the path ahead and for the year ahead. Okay, January 14th, Uranus is going direct in Taurus in your fifth house. And then on January 19th, the sun is going to enter Aquarius in your second house. So light is really, things are really going to make themselves known in terms of your like financial uh, department and where you want to go from there, where you want to go in terms of your value, uh, your value system, you know, what you, it could be your home life. It could be like what you want to contribute to the world. It could be part of like a, a, like a networking, a kind of social dynamic, you know, maybe involved in like investing or like trade, um, something that involves other people, something that involves other people and finances. And then January 28th, we have a full moon in Leo, and that's going to be transiting your eighth house of death, rebirth, and transformation. Um, so this full moon could definitely kind of um, trigger some some deeper feelings that want to kind of like come up to the surface, uh, maybe some repressed emotions. And then January 30th, Mercury is going retrograde in Aquarius in your second house. Um, and, you know, most people kind of already know a little bit about Mercury retrograde. It just kind of... Um, Going into Aquarius season and then Mercury being retrograde in Aquarius, there could just be a little bit of like backtracking, a little bit of backtracking in terms of what it is you really see yourself doing in this department, what it is you, you really want to communicate. And then after like, you know, if you're in the United States, we're having our presidential inauguration at the end of January. So this Mercury retrograde could very, very much trigger the need for people to kind of go back and really think about um, what it is they're communicating, what it is they're saying, what it is they want to express in reference to the collective, in reference to like a bigger picture kind of mentality. Um, there could be kind of like a lot of random information coming coming out, people becoming very expressive, um, expressing their beliefs, expressing their opinions, and it could definitely create in other people this need to retreat and to resist and to not kind of get caught up in the crossfires there. Okay, Capricorn, so let's start pulling Oracle cards to kind of see what parts of your life are wanting to come up and talk to you, okay, for January 2021. So um, I did pull the coming apart card, okay. So this can go one of two ways. This could be like you, you know, kind of falling apart within yourself, you kind of coming apart within yourself, and maybe just having like a bit of an identity crisis, you know, just a little bit. Um, nothing, nothing like too dramatic, but coming apart, just kind of maybe starting to see like split perspectives, maybe like um, starting to really figure out, you know, where um, like your place and where you belong and how all this energy is going to affect you, how all these different kinds of energies. I definitely see this as a reflection of your first house, of your sense of self, okay? It doesn't have to be um, 
like if you're in a partnership, I kind of see this more as you, like you just kind of needing to um, rectify and reconcile different parts of yourself. You know, there could be different parts of yourself um, and it's pulling you one way, it's pulling you another way. Like they're kind of different energies pulling you in different directions. And, you know, it could be because of this Aquarius energy. Aquarius energy kind of tends to pull apart so and it pulls apart so you can understand your own self better and where you stand on an authentic level and then become more in tune with your path, with your authenticity and the ability to communicate that authenticity with whoever, with whatever. Um, so you become true to your own path, to yourself, to your soul, to your ambitions and wherever it is that you're wanting to go um in life you know so this this definitely does carry a feeling of kind of like being um like a tug of war you know like different energies are trying to get your attention and pull you in different directions and this is going to require you to really spend some time with yourself and get to know yourself and where you want to put your energy and where you want to put your attention yeah, into the unknown. Okay, so into the unknown, it's really, you know, it's going to be, you know, this could actually be the beginning of a new journey for you, uh, Capricorn, this could be really the beginning of a new journey, where you just need to like embrace not really knowing what's going to happen, embrace a little bit more mystery into your life, you might need to embrace a little bit more mystery, and just kind of like trust your instincts and trust your gut. You know, this is going to require you to get in touch with your intuition, to get in touch with the depths of your soul and really just kind of like trust where you're being, where your soul is guiding you instead of like worrying so much about the energy that's around you. Yeah. And wide open. So it's, it's going to, you know, for the path, for the doors to open for you, for the possibilities to open up, um, it's gonna, it's gonna be about accepting that you're not going to completely know the outcome. It's kind of like accepting that you're not, you're not going to know where this is going to take you, but to be open to not knowing, to be open to not knowing where the future is going to bring you, but to like have faith. Okay. This is also about kind of like having faith in the universe, having faith that, uh, things are going to work out, that things are going to, um, you know, that the universe is going to bless you, so to speak. Okay. Let's get into tarot. So we do have a tower moment over here. And I definitely see this related to this coming apart. Okay, so the tower is representative of Mars energy. And we do have Mars going from Aries in its home sign of Aries, which was in your fourth house of home, family, and roots. And it's moving into Taurus on January 6th in your fifth house of creativity and romance. So, so there definitely could be a kind of sudden... Um, a kind of sudden shift of energy over here, some sudden changes in the realm of your home life and, and romance. Okay. You could be, um, maybe you're contemplating moving, you know, maybe like you're really, you know, you're really going to be kind of going through a transformation over here and some big changes with your identity and really, really the direction that you want to go in your life and what it is you want to do. If you want to kind of step into this new, um, you know, where it's going to force you to you know, it's going to force you to really figure out what it is you want. It's going to force you to really figure out what it is you want um, with your, like, soul. You know, with when it comes to maybe establishing roots or um, getting 
more deeply involved with a romantic partner or, um, you know, kind of figure out what you want to do with your creativity. If it has to do with your creativity, um, you know, the artist's method, the creator's method, you have to allow yourself to fall apart. And that's where you kind of get your inspiration from. That's where you're creative. Sometimes you just have to let yourself kind of go through that process of like unraveling so that new ideas can be born, so that a new path can forge. And that new path, that creative path, does have a lot to do with like not really knowing, trusting the universe, being open to new experiences, being open to a new way of life. Um, so this tower moment, I feel, is going to happen very much on an internal level. I feel like it's going to get triggered from an outside source. You know, but it's going to happen on an internal level and you're kind of just going to go through some uncomfortable feelings um, where you just need to, you need to figure out some things. You just need to figure out where you want to go. It's kind of going to like force you to figure out where you want to go. Okay, but with the six of wands over here with this Jupiter and Leo energy, um, I mean, it definitely shows you kind of like coming out victorious, coming out on top, coming out as a leader and um, kind of getting back, getting back on track, getting back into the routine. Um, the tower, it could, I mean, it could have to do with, you know, like a breakup. It could have to do with um, a coming apart with another um, whether it's a relationship or a friendship, you know, and maybe like starting a new path, starting a new journey after this falling apart over here and you kind of coming out victorious, it's kind of like, okay, I made this decision. I made this choice and now I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to become, um, that decision, which I made. I'm going to, um, so whatever kind of, choice that you made you know that you made this choice for yourself you know that it's the best thing for you um and you're being you're coming out as a leader now um with the six of wands with this jupiter in leo energy um and with the full moon coming at the end of the month um it could really start to shine so this is in your eighth house. Yeah. I think that the, 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 so the, it's going to open for you in the beginning. And then the choice that you have made for yourself and your new path, it's really, I feel like it's really going to solidify towards the end of the month. It's going to solidify and it's going to create a new sense of like, okay, I know I'm on the right path. You know, like in the beginning, it's going to feel a little like, okay, I know I'm on the right path, but uh, you know, it could feel a little kind of back and forth or you're still not feeling a hundred percent comfortable in your, in your deeper instincts and intuition. And I feel like that full moon in Leo is really going to kind of bring out the confidence and that like sense of security that you are needing in your emotions to trust your emotions and to trust your instincts. Okay. And then we have the two of swords, which talks about another decision. <laughs> so yeah, so this is really, I mean, you're, it's really going to be about trusting your instincts and trusting your intuition because the two of swords is the moon in Libra. So it's really about kind of tapping into that moon energy into that, um, that intuitive, instinctual kind of rhythm of life and trusting that it's going to lead you in the right direction. Okay, because this does talk about a choice. Um, the Two of Swords talks about like you needing to make a choice. Okay, you need to make a decision. And let me see, Libra is in your, let me see what house Libra is in. Do, 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 do. Libra is in your where? Okay, so Libra is in your um tenth house. Okay. So 
So Libra's in your 10th house of work, career, social status. So this decision that you are needing to make probably has to do with your work life. Your work life, okay? Could be an idea, you know, a kind of partnership, maybe um, whether or not you want to become partners in a certain business project or creative project or work project. Um, it could be a partnership kind of kind of thing. Okay, then we have the Four of Pentacles. This is your card. This is the Sun in Capricorn. Um, so this is in your first house of self, ego, expression. You're really kind of holding on to something. There's something that you're not wanting to let go of. There's something you're not wanting to let go of. And it could have to do with a romantic partner. It could have to do with, um, you know, you're feeling a lot of pressure with yourself, especially because you have some really strong transits going on in your first house. So you're feeling a lot of like personal pressure to kind of figure things out, especially with Pluto and Capricorn right now in your first house. Um, and then we have Mercury in Capricorn, and then we have Venus in Capricorn, okay? So, and then the, with a the new moon in Capricorn. So all, so all these transits that are going to be happening, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really kind of make you start to transform and realize and, you know, kind of figure some things out about yourself and who you are and uh, what you want to do. But... Uh, there is a sense of not, there is a sense of, um, like not wanting to let go, like not, um, not wanting to let this energy affect you or change you or like break your, um, break your, your momentum or your inner, your spirits. It could also be about... This could also be kind of like just be careful with your money right now and how you choose to spend your money. You know, it might not be the best time to just um, make like really big investments. It might not be the best time to um, splurge. Okay, and we have the Three of Cups. This is Mercury in Cancer. So this... Um, this kind of goes back to that full moon energy and cancer is in your seventh house of relationships. Okay. So I feel like this communication needs to happen. Okay. So if you are involved in a romantic relationship, um, and you're still a little bit confused and there are still some kind of back and forth, some confusing elements happening in this relationship, there's some, um, some, a bit of like an identity kind of crisis going on, you know, like you don't really know if you want to tie yourself to a relationship or stay independent, like maybe something like that. It's just, it's just going to require communication. Okay. It's going to require communication. It's going to require opening up. It's going to require opening up and really like talking through it, you know, or you might confide in your friends instead of speaking to the person. Um, you might instead just kind of confide in your friends and talk to your friends about what you're going through because you might not really know what to do about it. You know, you might be a little like confused about what to do about it. You're not sure. Your emotions are all over the place. You're a little confused right now about what you want to do, where you want to go, where your path is headed. You know, it's going to start to become more clear to you once we get into Aquarius season, though, okay? It's just because, like, sometimes when you are in your own sign, when you are in the season of your own sign, there's too much of that energy taking place, and too much of your own energy can kind of start to, you know, make things feel a little, uh, how do I explain it, a little, like you know, you don't feel like you're getting the right perspective. You don't feel like you're, um, you don't feel like you're really clear on things yet because there's a lot of hype. You know, there's a lot of hype around the energy. There's a lot of hype around the season, maybe your birthday or, you know, just in general. So you're, all of your 
your your energy feels more intensified, especially because it's in your first house. So there's like, you know, and you tend to be more focused on you, which can be, you know, a good thing and a bad thing. You know what I mean? It can be a good thing and a bad thing. Like, yeah, you should be focused on you, but are you like so focused on you that you're not really allowing yourself to see the bigger picture? Like kind of like that. Okay, and then for the final card, we have the Four of Swords, Jupiter in Libra. And what did I say Libra was? Your 10th house, right? Uh, work and career and authority figures. So it looks like you just need to rest, okay? It looks like you just need to take some time to relax, to take a deep breath, to meditate, to close your eyes, to just like put everything down um, and just clear your head. Okay, especially if you've been really obsessing about your own identity and your own psychology, your own emotions, like everything um, involved with you. Um, this is this is about kind of getting in touch with your divine nature. Um, this isn't like this isn't like ego driven. This is this is for your soul. This is when the divine comes in when. God comes in and is like, okay, look, like you just need to clear your head. You just need to meditate and take some time to rest and just kind of like let all that energy, all the intense energy that's going on right now, just kind of like let it, you know, let it do its thing and you just kind of like just let it filter through you and just kind of like reflect on the energies that are coming in. Like really take the time instead of instead of responding to the energy in the outside world, respond to the energy within you, you know, just kind of like allow yourself to feel, feel it filter through, see what thoughts are coming to your head, see all the different things that are coming through you and then, and allow it to do its thing and reflect in that regard. It's going to be a lot more healing. It's going to be a lot more therapeutic for your soul, for your ego, for your emotions, for everything, for your spiritual path. It's going to be a lot more therapeutic and you're going to come out of it like way feeling 10 times better. You're going to feel like revived. You're just going to be like, okay, I just needed that. Sometimes people just want to pull us in all sorts of directions and we feel like we have to go in those directions. We feel like we need to comply. You know, especially Capricorn energy, which is like, you know, that social energy is important, that um, that work focus energy is like important. But like, you know, becoming so consumed with everybody else's energy, it tends to kind of confuse us into thinking that, um, you know, we kind of get law, we get we get our uh, our identity becomes a little bit lost with the mix and the mingle. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, Capricorn, this is your reading for 2021. Um, so, I mean, it looks really like, it looks really, in my opinion, it looks good for your, for what you need. It looks good for your, um, for your soul, for like what your soul is kind of craving and needing right now. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, so this is your reading for January, 2021. I hope this helped. Let me know if you like my style of videos, if you enjoy my readings, like subscribe to my channel, uh, leave a comment down below. I am going to be doing a mid January, 2021 reading as well. Um, and then if you want to check out a new series, I started on my channel, it's called get to know me through astrology. It just allows you to get to know me on a more personal level through the lens of astrology. Um, and there's only one video right now, but there's going to be more videos for that. So if that's something you're interested in, the link is in the description box as well. Otherwise, I'll see you around. Um, enjoy the rest of the year. Two days left. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later.